What's up guys, Nemo Propaganda here, bringing you guys another subwoofer review. Today we've got the SVS SP1000 Pro. I actually bought this when it first came out and my queue has just been super jam packed. Recently someone left a comment and was like, bro, what happened to the SP1000 video? Thank you for that comment. I do read all the comments and that is what, you know, motivated me to, you know, uh, get some time with this thing, listen to it and review it today. So here we are. All right. We're going to do this review the same way we generally do. We're going to talk about some specs and standout features. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what it sounds like. We'll do some comparisons, then we'll wrap it up. I'll throw some specs on screen right now so you guys can take a look. So what does the Pro model introduce over the previous non-Pro model? Well, the plate amp gets 25 watts more, bumping it up to 325 watts RMS. And we get the cell phone app, which to me was a big shocker. I never expected SVS to be able to offer the cell phone app in the 1000 series subwoofers. I thought it just wasn't possible without raising the price. Um, when they brought it to the 2000 series, I was already fairly impressed, but kind of expected that. This really took me by surprise. So for those of you that don't know the cell phone app, essentially what you're getting is a huge quality of life improvement. From the listening position on your cell phone, you can adjust any and all features you'd ever want to adjust in a subwoofer. I'll leave a list of all the different things you can adjust, and as you can see, it's quite extensive. One of my favorite things within that cell phone app is going to be most beneficial to mixed system users. Maybe you like to play video games, listen to music, and watch movies all from the same system. So those of you guys that have systems like that know when your subwoofer is set up for music and then you put on a movie, there's not enough bass. You got to go back there and you got to turn up that gain. And then when you switch to a video game, it's the same thing. You either got to turn it up more or turn it down. Games, music, and movies all require different subwoofer setup. With the user-definable profiles within that cell phone app, you can actually set up a profile for each one of those things. So when you're going to play video games, you just pull out your phone real quick, go to the, cell, the app, uh, pick your uh, gaming preset, you're good to go. You can do the same with music, same with movies, you can change the name of the presets as well, um, or you can just have different presets for different styles of bass. You know, maybe one's run really hot, maybe another profile set up to integrate really well. It's really up to you. So I thought that was super cool. Another standout feature in my opinion is actually how small this is. For being a sealed 12 inch design, this is a lot smaller than most people think. I'll throw a picture on screen of it next to the micro. And as you can see, it's not that much bigger than the micro. I'll show another picture on screen next to something like the RHEL 1205. And I'll also show you the Rhythmic F12 next to the subwoofer. And as you can see, this is a little guy. This I consider a small subwoofer, maybe a schmedium. Um, so if you need something with a high wife acceptance factor, here you go. It, the, it comes with the traditional grill, not the metal bowed one that comes on the 3000 and up models, which further helps that wife acceptance factor. The finishes are going to be this um, kind of like ash wood vinyl, as you can see on the screen behind me. That's what I've got here. Or for a $100 upcharge, you can get gloss white or gloss black. I have seen both of those finishes and they're very nice. Personally, I'm a big fan of SVS's gloss black. Anyhow. Moving on, what does it sound like? So what we have is an SPL subwoofer. SPL subwoofers are going to give you a great amount of bass, attack, and slam for the money. That's what they do. Sometimes it may draw attention to itself, especially if you don't have it set up right. In this room, I was actually able to get this one to disappear very well. Was I able to get it to disappear as well as the three times the price Rel T9X or the two and a half times the price Rhythmic F12? No, but I didn't expect that either. At 500 bucks, the amount that I was able to get it to integrate and disappear in the room, I found very acceptable, especially for how aggressive the initial attack and slam of the subwoofer is. That's one of the areas where I really, that I think that's the selling point of SVS, honestly. I don't think it's the cell phone app. I don't think it's the marketing. I know some of you guys in the comments, you get a little bit jaded. You, you know, you say stuff like, oh, SVS is just a marketing company. They're not. They're, they happen to be the biggest subwoofer company in the world. And as a result, they have a larger marketing budget than most companies. So you're going to see some ads, guys. Get used to it, okay? It's not a big deal. Uh, plus, marketing is a part of every company. Why are we even getting annoyed by that? Um, what the hell was I talking about? The attack. Okay. This is one thing SVS is really good at. When the bass note kicks, man, SVS just does something magical. The way it pressurizes the room, 
and just comes on initially is so aggressive, it's so violent. You just, you like, you're like, whoa. It gives you that whoa experience. I found that to be true with the 3000, the 2000, and now the 1000. A great example is the Jeezy song, Put On. The first bass frequency is infrasonic, something this small can't re reproduce bass frequencies that low with too much authority. It can, it's there, it's not like missing entirely, it's there. The second bass frequency is a little bit higher, but the second one has slam to it. And with this subwoofer, it slams pretty hard. It was the same with the Micro 3000, it was the same with the 2000 Pro, it was the same with the SB3000. That's just something that SVS is really good at. My opinion is I think that has to do with their plate amplifiers and how much reserve power they have um, for peaks and things like that. So hats off that they were able to kind of give us that SVS flavor even in their cheapest, most affordable product at just $500. And then again, with like the all the tech, the cell phone app, the DSP, it's you're getting a lot for the money. If you're the kind of consumer who when you buy something feature set matters to you, that you'd probably be very happy with this because there isn't a subwoofer with a larger feature set at this price point. There just isn't. Honestly, even at double the price, you're not really gonna find any subwoofers with more features than this has. The only other feature like really expensive subwoofers have that this one doesn't have is gonna be like uh, auto calibration. Usually though, you have to spend quite a few thousand, uh, quite a few thousand dollars to find a subwoofer with auto calibration. Anyhow, I digress. The sound overall is very good. I have personally found all SVS subwoofers, including this one, to have very good speed, uh, amazing dynamics, very strong attack, um, and overall just pressurize the room very quickly and very efficiently. The integration is gonna be as good as you're gonna be willing to spend time setting it up, right? And usually what I have found is I've been able to get uh, SVS subwoofers to integrate what I consider good enough, right? Uh, as I said previously, um, by direct A-B comparison, I can't get them to integrate as good as something two to three times the price, but I don't expect that either. Let me see if there's anything I missed out as far as the sound. Overall bass note dis distinction is very good and no, the subwoofer is not boomy. I get this question in the comments a lot. People ask, is it boomy? Guys, I haven't heard a boomy subwoofer in like 20 years. I don't think boomy subwoofers exist anymore. Maybe if you found like some Amazon special $150 ported subwoofer, maybe that would be boomy, but I, I, I don't know what to tell you. It, it's not boomy at all. It's not like boxy sounding or anything like that. The bass is fairly clean, fairly articulate. There's good bass note distinction. The mid bass region was just okay. That's generally the case for most subwoofers. They're not mid-bass woofers anyway. They're subwoofers, so no surprise there. The only two subwoofers I have found that have really, really good mid-bass information is gonna be Rel or Rhythmic, um, but those are SQ-focused designs, so no surprise there. Anyhow, the sound from top to bottom, I found to be very good, and I was able to get it to play well, even with speakers that have lighter weight moving mass, like my Focal Ar Focal Aria. 906 that you see on the stands. However, I will say, I believe the subwoofer will be better suited to sub uh, speakers that have a little bit heavier moving mass. Um, the integration is usually gonna come down to phase adjustment and slope adjustment, primarily because slope affects phase as well. If you can get your slope and phase correct, you're gonna get this thing to integrate what I would consider good enough for the amount of attack that it has. The reason I say that is, so there's a few things with subwoofers where you can't have both. The first one, for example, is tightness and deep bass. The two are at odds with each other. Tightness requires things to be quick. Deep bass requires time, which could be slow. So if the bass is extremely deep on this hand, it might sound a little slow. If the bass on this hand is extremely tight, it's not gonna sound very deep. The manufacturer has to find a compromise. Most brands do. This one does. This plays fairly tight and fairly deep. It's a good balance of the two. So uh, my point here is moving on to the next two things that are at odds with each other are attack and integration. These two things are at odds with each other. You cannot have a subwoofer that has crazy good attack and integrates really well. Because if the attack is really, really powerful, the subwoofer is naturally gonna draw attention to itself. In that moment of powerful, aggressive attack, you're gonna know your subwoofer is doing its job. 
Um, when a subwoofer integrates extremely well, on the other hand, that very aggressive initial attack simply isn't there. Instead, the bass is more coming from the background and it's not something that's gonna draw attention to itself. What we're getting into here is essentially the difference between SQ focused subwoofers and SPL focused subwoofers. And if you didn't know those two different kinds, I will say you're not ready to buy a subwoofer. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I've done a few videos on this already and I've already talked about it quite a lot. So I'm not gonna get into it too much here. But guys, I'm getting a little bit tired of chatting about this all the time. I need you as the consumer to start doing a bit of your own research and learn what your taste is. That's not something I can help you with. I'll give you one last example to try to make it clear. I love cars, a lot, but I'm a certain kind of car customer. Now that doesn't mean all the other cars that I don't like are bad cars. Um, it's just, I know what I like. I like sports cars that are somewhat comfortable. A great example would be something like a Porsche 911. I love those cars. I find them to be comfortable enough. Driving dynamics is excellent and the power is phenomenal. Mercedes S560, on the other hand, is a luxury car. It's a luxury first design. It's a fantastic car. It is the benchmark luxury sedan and I don't like it whatsoever. It's not to my taste, right? I would never in a million years cross shop a Porsche 911 and a Mercedes S560. The two are fantastic cars and I would never cross shop them. I just wouldn't. I would cross shop a Porsche 911 with a Grand Touring car, like something like an Audi RS7, right? Uh, or something like a Mercedes AMG GT, but not a S560 that is a luxury first car. I am not a customer for a luxury first car. I'm a customer for a sports car or a Grand Touring car and that's it. Now with subwoofers, you need to know for yourself if you're a customer for SPL subwoofer or SQ subwoofer. It's funny too because most people, you know, SQ sounds like the more like fancy esoteric thing. Believe it or not, most of you guys are SPL first customers and I can prove it to you. SVS makes SPL subwoofers and SVS is the biggest subwoofer company in the world. That means more people are buying SPL subwoofers, meaning most people like SPL subwoofers. Anyhow. Let's get into some comparisons, guys. So, uh, let's talk about the SVS SB1000 Pro versus something like the RSL Speedwoofer 10S. It is important to note in this comparison, the RSL Speedwoofer 10S is $100 cheaper, but the cabinet is much larger and it is a ported design, and it's got 25 watts more from its plate amp for a total of 350 watts RMS. Being larger, the RSL Speedwoofer 10S will extend lower and play louder, that's no surprise. The ported version of this, the PB1000, compared to this, will also extend lower and play louder. Anytime a subwoofer is larger than the one you're comparing it to, generally speaking, the larger one will extend lower and play louder. Now, the sound of the two are somewhat different. The RSL Speedwoofer has a bit of a mid-bass bump that I don't love so much. It's cool because it does give very tactile bass, but personally, I don't care so much for tactile bass. The SVS SB1000 Pro is gonna be more linear in its frequency response and does not have a mid-bass bump. You can give it one if you want to because it does have three uh, PEQ settings, so you know, no, no harm, no foul there, right? Um, the RSL Speedwoofer 10S has a, uh, for the black, the vinyl finish is not something I find very appealing. I like the vinyl finish of the SVS SB1000 quite a bit more. Um, aesthetically, I think the 1000 Pro will fit into the room quite a bit nicer. Which one you like the sound of overall, I will say comes down to personal taste. Both are very good and without an AB comparison, I think most people would be happy with either one. Um, this is a situation where both subwoofers are very, very good in my opinion. But the SVS SB1000 Pro, you get that cell phone app that is, again, that huge quality of life improvement. So anyone with a mixed system, you probably wanna shift your focus over here. Um, and consider the SB1000 Pro. Um, let's move on and talk about the Emotiva SE12. The Emotiva SE12 is another $400 subwoofer. Um, that's pretty good for the money, but it only has 200 watts RMS from its plate amp, where this has 300 watts RMS from the plate amp. Now the Emotiva SE12 is quite a bit larger, but in this situation, honestly, I found the two to have similar extension, where, but the SB1000 Pro actually had more output, uh, most likely to having 50% more power. So. In that comparison, um, if you have the extra 100 bucks, I think the SB1000 Pro might be something you would prefer. 
Um, interestingly enough, I did like the vinyl finish on the Emotiva a little bit more than the SP1000 Pro. Emotiva's vinyl finish is almost like a leatherette. It is among one of the nicest vinyl finishes I have seen, aside from Dolly speakers. Dolly's uh, vinyl finishes, definitely one of the best. Anyhow, um, it's been a while since I've heard the Emotiva SE12, so it's going to be hard for me to give you uh, like real like detailed sound comparisons. Yeah, I'm not even going to try, guys. It's, been, it's just been too long. Um, let's move on and compare this to something more expensive. Uh, Rhythmic L12. That's $589, but I do think it's important to point out in the budget category when we start adding $100 or $200 to the next product up, you know, we're adding something like 30% more budget. Um, that, that can be a big difference for a lot of people, and things do get wildly different. So uh, it is important to keep that in mind. The Rhythmic L12 is quite a bit larger. So like we said earlier, larger subwoofers, lower extension, and can play louder. No surprise there. Being a servo design, the Rhythmic will have a little bit, a little bit better mid-bass articulation as well. Um, the two subwoofers are fairly different though. Remember that SQ and SPL I talked about previously? Well, Rhythmic is a SQ subwoofer. SVS is a SPL subwoofer, meaning the Rhythmic L12 even though it extends lower and plays louder, it does not have the slam and attack that the SVS SB1000 Pro has. If you like slam and attack, you will like the SVS SB1000 Pro more. If you don't like slam and attack and instead want bass that is going to pressurize your room but you're not really gonna notice it unless you're paying attention to it, then perhaps you will like the L12. Anyhow, it's hard to compare the SB1000 Pro to anything else because it's so affordable. Um, but let's compare it to SVS's own subwoofers and then we'll wrap it up. So, SVS is really good at giving you a taste of their sound at every price category. Now, this is the fourth or fifth SVS subwoofer I have had here. Um, I've reviewed the SB3000, the SB2000 Pro, and the Micro. And all three of them have a few things in common. The, that very aggressive attack I've talked about that pressurizes the hell out of the room, they all have. I consider that part of the SVS house sound and it's something I like a lot. Uh, all of them have the cell phone app, which is awesome. Um, where they're different, right? This being the cheapest one, it's not gonna, ha it's not gonna play as clean as the SB2000 or 3000 will or even the micro, um, especially at the limit, right? This only has a one and a half inch voice coil. It's not huge. It's not gonna be able to do what the 2000 Pro can do. Um, the 2000 Pro will extend lower, it will play louder. The 3000, again, will extend much lower and play much louder. The SB3000 is what I like to consider as much bass as you can have in that form factor for the money. Um, there are other subwoofers that give you more output, even still for the size, but they're double the price. So, you know, you get what you pay for. Anyhow, um, I would say this is gonna be a fantastic subwoofer for small to medium size rooms. If you have a medium size room, I think you'll be better off with the SB2000 Pro. The reason is when it's being played louder, the SB2000 Pro is more articulate. It's more effortless. Um, it's just, it does everything just a little bit better. And I think where this might sound stressed in a medium room, the SB2000 Pro will sound just fine. If you're not sure what size subwoofer to get from SVS, I would say shoot them an email or give them a phone call, tell them what size your room is, what your intended usage scenarios are, and go from there. But if you have even a small room and you're a theater first customer, I'm gonna make this really easy for you. Get the biggest ones you can from them. It's really that simple. My buddy has an apartment. His living room is small. He has two PB16 Ultras in that apartment. And it's a theater only rig, and guys, it sounds freaking amazing. Theater first customer, there's no limit to how big your subwoofers can be, honestly. Get the PB2000 Pro even, or PB3000 Pro if you can. Theater first customers, shoot for the moon, baby. The bigger, the better. Music only systems are a little bit different. That's what I focus on here. Music only systems, if the subwoofer's too large, you're not gonna be able to give it the momentum it needs to play clean and play with your gear, right? In theater, we demand a ton of output from our subwoofers, so they're almost always in their sweet spot. But if I had a pair of 15s in this room, 
I'd probably only have them turned up a few clicks. They wouldn't be getting enough power to move enough to be in their optimal uh, linear range or sweet spot, if you will. And that's why, you know, for a music only system, maybe the 2000 Pro is better for a medium room or medium room, but you know, again, theater first, the bigger the better, baby. Anyhow, I digress. I don't have much else to say about the SVS SB1000 Pro, but if there's anything I missed or if you have any questions, ask about it in the comments below. I do answer all questions. Um, I will say, if you're gonna ask a uh, setup related question, it might be better to reach out to SVS. They actually get paid for it. Um, that's like their job. They're really happy to do that and a lot better at that than I am because it's their own product. If you're asking me a question and your room is a factor, please tell me how big your room is. If you have a question about associated equipment, please tell me your associated equipment. It is challenging sometimes when someone just leaves a comment like, should I get the SB1000 or the SB or the PB1000? I don't know, what are you doing? If you're a theater only customer, you'd probably be better off with the PB1000. If you're a music first customer, you may prefer the SB1000. I don't know what you're doing. Or if your room is just a lot bigger, PB1000 might be better. If your room is really big, neither might be the good option for you and you'd probably be better off with the PB2000. Without knowing these things, I can't help you guys. And again, remember, I do this for free. So if I don't answer your question, hey man, maybe I'm out hanging out with my friends. I do have a life outside of YouTube, believe it or not. Anyways, I'm gonna shut up because I've talked enough. Good subwoofer, 500 bucks. Can't believe it has the cell phone app. Uh, really good value for the feature set. Um, honestly, probably, probably the best value for feature set. I, I don't think there's better. Yeah. Anyways, guys, until next time, later.